So Marcus Satterfield says Nebraska is going to be a pro style offense, use a fullback and a tight end. Here's exactly what he said, Marcus Satterfield. We're going to be a pro style offense. Like we actually get in a huddle, which is kind of taboo these days. Like we're going to get in a huddle and call football plays and uh, we're going to use tight ends. We're going to use a fullback. We're going to, we're going to, you know, run the football. We understand to be successful in the Big Ten, you've got to be able to run the football because you're going to play late in the season in some interesting weather games, and you can't just throw the ball, you know, all over the field. So, uh, I see that, you know, we're from the point of just being the physicality and playing good, clean football. And uh, I think that, you know, we're off to a good start with our recruiting. We are off to a good start with that press conference with Satterfield. Yeah, that Nick, I got to tell you something. That huddle talk, way more than the fullback talk, yeah, made me giddy. I was, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't want to listen. You almost have to be apologetic at Nebraska if you're a media member or even a fan, probably if you express optimism or if you just like what you're hearing. You got to preface it by saying, "Okay, I know this doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win, but I really like what I hear." You, it feels like you always have to buffer it. Yeah. With a, with a, hey, I know I, the games aren't starting till fall. Right. But like that's where that's what I've said the last couple of weeks when we've kind of you know dissected what Matt Rule has done and the staff yeah. and things like that. Yeah. It's been this whole conversation of, listen, for it's it's December thirty first, and for what you can do on December thirty first, they're doing an all right job. Yeah. You but got I, it. But I get you it. Got it. But I get it. Yeah. People don't want to hear you go overboard no, because because no. the media. I get it too that that. We and I did. I, I'm I get overly optimistic, I mean, I think it's human nature mm-hmm. you, to, to want to think it's gonna work. Okay, here's the best way to put it, Nick. <clears throat> we got a caller. Well, yep. here's the best way to put it isn't it more appealing? Isn't the conversation more appealing if you're looking for things that you think will make this work or reasons it's going to work? If yeah. you're looking, if you're always looking for reasons why it's not going to work or why you think it's not going to work, well, come on. Well, you're going to drive yourself crazy for the next nine months. Yeah. Isn't the, isn't it just a natural uh, for a fan just to look for reasons it's going to work or look for appealing things. And what we saw, what we heard Friday from both Tony White and Marcus Satterfield in their first appearances before the local media, a lot of it was very appealing. The huddle thing is incredible to me. Well, so he's it, on a huddle crusade. He's on bingo. a huddle crusade. You I, I was, play that I, yep, we got that. So, so here, here's Marcus Satterfield kind of diving deeper into the, the whole huddle conversation. I, I'm on a crusade about the huddle, like the huddle is is the the heart and soul of football uh you cannot tr- you cannot teach the leadership moments you can't script the leadership moments that happen in a huddle if you talk to uh any football player that played in a huddle they're always going to talk about funny things that happen in a huddle. this guy was puking in a huddle. this guy ripped my you know what in the huddle this guy you know joe montana goes in the huddle, says we're getting ready to go down you know 75 yards and win this game so there's all these moments to happen in a huddle. And then I think, how do you ask your quarterback to be a leader if he never talks? Today's football has become, you know, clapping my hands for a snap count and the coach is signaling plays on cue cards. And so, and then they complain about the quarterback not being a leader. Well, when does he have a chance to lead? And I think in a huddle and the way that we play football, it gives our quarterbacks, you know, a chance to be a vocal point, a vocal leader on our offense. How about Marcus Satterfield? Mm -hmm. How about, now I had heard, from guys in the business coaches that that Satterfield can be a little caustic and now you 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 heard it kind of I mean he's he's sort of just taking issue with a lot of the offenses and it's yeah. pretty pervasive in college football where you clap that where you clap your hands for the snap count you look over at cue cards nobody huddles mm-hmm. he's sort of saying that's a ridiculous way to play football yeah and you know what I don't I don't go that far with it, but I, the huddle thing to me, and I'm not just being a fanboy here. When he said it, I was, I was sort of, I felt like a seventh grade, seventh grader going to worlds of fun. Mm-hmm. Like I was overjoyed. You're going to get in a huddle. We're going to see a huddle. Well, it's, we're going to see a damn huddle. It's something different, it's right? And that's what one thing for, yes. like for me, for me, what was so frustrating is that 
we heard for so many years now that things are going to be different and then didn't sh- see it on the field. No, and, and this goes back into exa- it all comes full circle because it all comes back to exactly what we kind of open this segment with or open this discussion with right now on January 9th. That's all you can take from Marcus Satterfield. Right. We don't know. Is is it going? He, to they'll be in a huddle. Yeah, exactly. They'll be in a huddle. They will. They will be. But yeah. as of right now, we don't know for he a can't, fact. You can't. You can't say that. It's he can't a, say a, that and not be in a huddle. You're right. Though. You're right. But I understand. I mean, think about all the things we've heard, Sip, where it, yeah. it just hasn't come oh, to fruition. I got you. Yeah. So it's something different. It's. It's. I understand it could be considered coach speak. It, it, I could under. I, I could understand it. That if, wasn't. That wasn't coach speak. But coaches saying things just to <laughs> appease the fan base. Oh yeah, simple. I mean, like that. But that's what I'm thing. saying is, it didn't sound saner. It didn't. It didn't sound. It didn't. I, that did sound kind of aggressive. I did not mean <laughs> no, it. That was aggressive. <laughs> no, I I get but, what you're saying. You're right. But I think know, this is an example of something that is clearly not coach speak. He's on a crusade. Yeah. Like, I mean, when he says I'm on a crusade, that's strong. Mm-hmm. He's not a piece. He's not trying to appease anybody. In fact, in saying some of that, he's gonna piss some people off. A lot of coaches who use cue cards and snap and clap for the snap, right? I think not piss them off, but some yeah. of those guys are going to listen to that and they're going to say, oh, okay, kind of being haughty, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of a little haughty. Yeah, I think that's all so. right. Which that's okay. I He's mean, you got strong it, convictions. You, you don't have to. You don't have to want everybody to like you. You don't need everybody no. in the business to like you, no. right? He's got and, strong and, and honestly, let's be honest. If you're doing your job and winning football games, not everybody's going to like you. Yeah, in the business, no. fan base will be fine with you, but yeah. in the business, I, I was doing some research because we, Nebraska has had kind of this up tempo style of offense, right, where yeah. they haven't necessarily huddled the most, and 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 maybe they haven't had the personnel needed, like whatever it may be, but it's either it's basically you live, you can you can find success with an up tempo, high play count type of offense, but you can also die by it as well. Yeah. Right. It, it can also be the reason that you weren't able to either sustain a drive, whether you were able to milk out the clock in the last couple minutes of the game. And and that's how you lose or that's how you win the game, whatever it may be. Two games that stood out to me from this last season where okay. Nebraska kind of could have done better. Purdue and Wisconsin at milking at, the clock at milking the clock or or examples of the uh, opponent doing that job. Okay, Purdue, give me, give me per- Purdue. Purdue, for example. Okay. Late stage of the third quarter and start of the fourth quarter. Purdue had a 15 play, <laughs> 72 yard drive that took up over six and a half minutes of game time. And this is when they were up by four points, 34 to 30. Purdue was. So, so a pretty important stage of the ball game. Yeah. Right. Nebraska answers with a four play drive that ate up 57 seconds. Yeah. So, and then Purdue would then end the game. They would get Purdue would get the ball back with like five fifty five left in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. They orchestrated a twelve play, fifty three yard drive, as well as or excuse me, in the final six minutes of the game. And so that's a team that Purdue was characterized as this 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 program that's able to throw the ball. They got second team All Big Ten quarterback and Aiden O'Connell from twenty twenty one. Yes, they have they lost David Bell, but here's the deal. They have um, Charlie Jones, who was right. one of the biggest surprises in the Big Ten this this year. He was. And then not to mention, they did this with a walk-on at running back in Devin Mockaby. Yeah. And so when we look at Nebraska, there's no reason that they shouldn't be able to do that either. Run some clock. Run some clock. Salt it away. Salt it away. Salt and, out away a win. Yeah, we've but, seen I Nebraska mean, have trouble doing that like against exactly. Wisconsin. Against so, Wisconsin. So then Wisconsin was the other game I thought about. Well, I mean, as far as salting away. Nebraska got the ball late and couldn't salt it away. Exactly. So that's what you're getting. At. Yeah. Well, Nebraska was up 14 to three at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. 14 of Wisconsin's 17 fourth quarter plays mm-hmm. were runs. Yeah. While they were down 14 to three. That's what you want to see Nebraska do. And and well, oh my God, they're know, down 14 to three. 14 to three at the start of the fourth quarter. That's mm-hmm. their identity number one, and number two. It's kind of talked about what Satterfield talked about on on Friday. Yeah. When it's November, yeah, you can't rely on throwing the ball. Exactly, and so that's, that's a good where example. It, it, that's a great example. Of, Remember it that kind of all comes full circle, and that's what made my 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 cell my my ears kind of perk up a little bit yeah. on Friday. Was once again maybe maybe that's maybe that can be coach speak, if you will. That hey, we you know. Listen, we know the conference. You know, 
but Satterfield some, said something along the lines of, you can't do your own thing and expect it to work. Yeah, uh, okay. I mean, you're exactly right. I, I want to go back to that Wisconsin game. Remember the North Wind? Yeah. I was howling. It was 18 degrees at kickoff. Yeah, you could. But that, that's not the feel. It feels like temp. Uh -uh. That, it, I looked it up. It was 18 degrees at 11 a.m. No, you're exactly right. That's what he's talking about. Um, he's He's definitely talking about that the weather issue now um no you're 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 100 100 right about that that's interesting those are two good examples too thank you for that but I, satterfield yeah satterfield is I, I know it's interesting that we even have to i feel like we're we have to this whole tone of the conversation is fascinating to me that we have to sort of defend what we feel about what Satterfield mm -hmm. said. Yeah. But that's the kind of the position we're in. I know I didn't sense a lot of that on social media. So maybe I'm creating some of that in my head. I just really liked what I heard. I don't yeah. believe that it necessarily is going to guarantee wins. But these guys that rule brought in, there's no question that their their emphasis is in the right areas, getting mm -hmm. big men, right? Yeah getting big linemen yeah tony white talked about it especially on the defensive side how how he's like you know it works out well for us because and i don't want to switch to defense or anything <clears throat> no, he no. said he's like matt rule wants to recruit big boys up front right and the same could be said for the offense too well i'm going to give you a quote here in fact how about that this is what this is what satterfield said about that and the weather i mean i wrote a column about it um this is what he said he sounds convincing when he says this. We are going to run the football. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to start with winning the line of scrimmage, like you said, and running the ball. All different throws and play actions come off running the football. In order to win in this league, Satterfield said on Friday, you've got to be tough, you've got to be blue-collar, and you have to win the line of scrimmage, and that's where the offense starts. That's not the weather quote I was looking for, but that's – yeah, I mean, that's reiterating it, what you said. It can be – it can be – it can all kind of be tied together <laughs> – because the way I look at it, Sipple, is on November 19th when it's 18 degrees mm -hmm. or whether it's November 19th and 60 degrees, mm -hmm. which is, doesn't happen. The, the running game will work. Mm -hmm. The running game is something you can fall back on. That's what I mean. Now, I know. Now, you're right, though. We've heard we've all we've heard this song and dance before, you know, and, I, and Frost said like, he's got to run the ball. Bingo. You know, Riley. Yeah. We, we hear it. Now, when Pelini was a coach, they ran the hell out of it. I mean, mm -hmm. Amir Abdullah had back-to-back -back years of 1,500 yards rushing. They ran it. Yeah. But since then, it's been pretty sporadic, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty sporadic. Yeah. Or just not there. Well, I mean, I, I just always go back. I mean, the, the funniest um, thing that I can think about, or one of the funnier things of the Scott Frost era, is how Divino Zigbo started the 2018 season as the third string. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Greg Bell leaves two or three games into the season. Yeah. And it, it was just kind of, you know, that's just kind of sums up everything perfectly in a nice little bow is that you have a thousand yard rusher on your team, but he started the season third string, third string, or because of injuries and because of some other things, Ramir Johnson, who started fifth string in 2021, mm -hmm. ends up leading rush, leading your with your, yeah, as your leading, leading rushers rusher. among the running backs. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And now there were injuries. Gabe Irvin got hurt in that Oklahoma game, and and he started the season as a true freshman and and things like that. But coaches, Nick, don't always make the right decisions. They don't. Sometimes it's glaring. Max Dugan didn't start the season as TCU starting quarterback. He didn't start the season as TCU starting quarterback, but he ended it as the number two Heisman. Guy. Yeah. Okay. They made a somebody made a bad bad decision. Mm -hmm. Seems like. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy wasn't your he wasn't your best guy. Now, maybe I don't know. Maybe he caught a heat or whatever. But I the one thing I've I'll be this is this is a late in life thing for too long. I just thought coaches know more than I do. They know more than Nick Saner. They know more than everybody that. So I don't question them very much. What I've learned over the years is they make some bad decisions sometimes. Question. It's OK to question them. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. They make I bad decisions. So. So, we've seen some flat bad decisions at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. We, but you see them everywhere. Things that you're just sort of astounded by, right? Okay, astounded. 
I always bring up Zach Wilson, number two pick in the draft. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was just that's just a that is a hor- horrendous pick. Well, I, I think I, I think it's the the location of the pick. So number two was was probably a little bit of a reach. I also think bit, putting right? yeah a little bit right. I also think putting a BYU guy in the heart of New York and saying, "Hey, you have the keys to the franchise now. Yeah. You're the starting quarterback for the New York Jets." I think yeah. that's. I think that was a bad fit as well. Greg in South Carolina offers some. He kind of balances out this conversation a little bit. Nick, we're drinking a little too much Kool Aid. Yep, and we're we're getting that on the text line. Okay, and this is what Greg says. Now, a lot of people on the text line are going to be happy with Greg. Don't buy the Kool Aid, boys. Greg mm-hmm. says Satterfield and the Gamecocks couldn't run a lick. Yeah, his entire offense was a no. His entire offense was a no huddle, up tempo Spencer Radler fire drill. I saw every game. Now, it is sort of interesting, and I didn't I didn't look back at South Carolina. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't in a huddle, so the crusade begins now. I suppose. I saw I saw them huddle a couple times, but yeah, I'd have to look. Here they are. I mean, and, and that's where it's <clears> like <throat> you see once again, Sip, we're driving ourselves crazy right here. I mean. We're, we're how, how deep have we talked about, well, are they going to huddle? Are they not going to huddle? Can they be successful without a huddle? Can Is the only way they can be successful is with a pro-style offense? It, it's like the conversation, I think it, it just shows the the <clears throat> how desperate everybody is. Yeah. I, I really do. I do, too. I agree with you on that. And it's <laughs> it's like, you know, when you step, well, when you step back and you, you think, man, look, like, look at this. We're freaking out about a guy. A football coach saying that they're going to huddle up. I know. I now I, I wonder. I mean, think about I, this. I wonder it's if, crazy. I wonder if I was wondering if people on the text line were were saying, oh, "You guys are really making a lot out of them huddle." It's just a basic football thing. Nah, mm-hmm. it's not, and not anymore. You don't see it a lot. And it's, I like it when you do, and I like the idea of Nebraska doing it. Um, and I like the idea of a fullback. Uh, being part of this they didn't recruit a fullback so i don't know what that means well, if, it's kind of weird interesting now because i don't know if you can really recruit a, a fullback. fullback yeah i think you got to look at like maybe a tight end yeah and, and see yeah. who who's versatile enough yeah. to, to make this change i think because in high school they don't use them no exactly yeah. exactly I, I think the whole quarterback conversation with this is interesting as well on the back end of that crusade comment um mark satterfield talked about how he feels like it's an opportunity for his quarterback to lead vocally mm-hmm. on the field. Mm-hmm. And I think the quarterback conversation, maybe we can get to this the rest of the week is going to be interesting around Nebraska because Satterfield was asked, you know, how important is the quarterback run to you? And he said, you know, it's, it's <clears throat> important. It's important to football nowadays. And you have a guy in, in Jeff Sims, you have a guy in Jeff Sims, who's six, four, two twenty. Sims is 6'4", 220. That's exactly six, four, right. 6'4", 220. Yeah. Jeff Sims. Who, who, who can run and throw. Casey Thompson is a little undersized. Yeah. 5'11". Yeah, exactly. 5'11", 205. So, but then when you talk about the whole leadership discussion as well, we know what kind of leader Casey Thompson is at Nebraska. He's a leader. So He is. I, like, He's I, a leader. Honestly, He's a bona fide, so genuine leader. It's going to be interesting to see how the quarterback conversation kind of shakes out mm-hmm. for what this staff is looking like. And also that on the field kind of leadership and how they want to have a quarterback that's out there being vocal. Yeah, that will be. It's, it's going, it's, I think it's a fascinating angle to this whole thing. Yeah. So. I, I, I mean, can we just agree on that? That so far what we've heard is interesting. I mean, mm-hmm. give us that. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, I really appreciate the fact that those guys talked on Friday, mm-hmm. that they pres- that, that, that Nebraska decided to put them in front of the media court because it gave us a lot to talk about. It was beautiful. Yeah. And it gave us a chance to kind of meet those guys. Mm-hmm. Pretty no-nonsense guys, right? Yeah. But, and you know, they haven't lost a game yet, so we'll see what that looks like, with, if they, what they're going to lose. They're going to lose games. Uh, we'll see what that all looks like. But, you know, so far – I don't think it's wrong for you or I or any media member to say, hey, I like what I hear here. Yeah. Now, and, we always and, say and once, Yeah, it, and it goes back full circle to what uh, we said, right? Um, Wet Blanket says this. You oh. guys are hilarious. Yeah. You, 
get excited about what Satterfield says in a press conference. I look up what Satterfield does as an offense coordinator and discover that at his previous job, he was 12th in the SEC in rushing offense right. and averaged 3.7 yards per carry. Okay, now here's the question, though, Wet Blanket. Do you say that that'll naturally carry over, or can you just say, no, this is a restart in a new mm-hmm. conference at a new school where, where – the weather, for instance, in the SEC is not nearly as big a factor. So yeah. does it do you automatically wet blanket just say no matter what he's done in the I mean, what he's done in the past is it absolutely what he's going to do here? Or can't a coach change up what he does? See, I, I believe that a coach can change up. I believe you have to change up. Even the talk of the three, what, three, five. What is the whole what, what have the last four years shown Nebraska fans that you need to adapt to right, survive? Right. Charlie McBride adapted. He ran a five two and then and then he switched. You know, he switched his defense and because he realized he had to get faster guys. You could say, no, coaches coaches are what they are. They do what they no, not all the time. They they adjust. I think it's I think it's you have you either adapt or you die. Right. So and, and I, I think it's unfair to maybe look at the previous staffs, multiple right. staffs, and, and when they were unable to adapt or mm-hmm. unable to adjust to be successful, it's unfair to automatically shift that same belief onto this current staff. Right. Yeah, I agree. But once again, we won't know until August. I'm agreeing with you too much, by the way. We're going to have to stop yeah, that. Yeah, you got you to gotta be on a different side here. Yeah, it's no fun to turn on a radio show where a guy keeps saying, I agree, yeah. I agree. We have to block horns here pretty soon. That's right. Maybe maybe we will. Let's go ahead and uh, get to break. Early break. Nick Sainert filling in for Jake Sorensen. Steve Simple joining me as always. When we come back, Husker Hoops got a oh, yes. big victory on Saturday. They squeaked one out on the road in overtime. We talk about it next. Stick with us. Early break on the ticket.